should be live to the people. Hello, everybody. Before we get started, I'm going to make sure our audio sounds good. So uh, I'm going to have our guest, our special guest, speak up, and we will see what the audience thinks of our audio levels. Anyway. Oh, is it my turn to show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, hello. Actually, actually turned on the stream. Uh, some people are saying no sound. No, so they're they're way behind. <laughs> Almost perfect. How would you change it, Hot Almost Ross perfect. Buns? Are you Audio's using levels are good? Are, are you using ear earbuds? Yeah, uh, yeah, I am. You're using earbud. I'm roasting you right now. You got earbuds streaming. You're drinking Lacroix. What Jesus. wait? What are streamers supposed to do? Have those? You want me to wear these big fucking cans on my ears so I can't hear myself speak? Why do you want to hear yourself speak, man? Are you some egotistical person? No, it's, it's because <laughs> I, I have severe autism, and if I if I don't hear my own vocal level, I might not know if I'm screaming or not. You, how old are you? Twenty three. Old enough to know when you're not screaming at someone. I told you I'm autistic. It's a... Oh, wait, no, I forgot. I got to wear my, my jacket. This is the Monkey Jones interview show. Oh, wait, right here. Oh, no, he can't hear me. He's wearing AirPods. He better not be talking shit about me while my AirPods are out. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, I'm back. He roasted the fuck out of me great. I think, hold on. Wait a second. I think. No, we don't have the same chair. I was, I was just double checking. I was like, your chair looks. Fam your chair is like a variation of the one that I have. Does yours squeak does like your... a motherfucker when you barely move? It does. God damn it. it does. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> how do? How are you supposed to grease and oil a chair? It's a question I've I've pondered for many a year. Never decided to research it. Never decided to buy any WD forty. It's just a. Oh, just go to a local office, Max. And buy a brand hey. new chair? No. Hey, clerk. Can you grease my chair? It <laughs> makes noises. Drag it in behind me. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing wired AirPods, fam at company. Wired? I mean, how do they sound? Did they sound all right? I haven't used them in a while. What? Headphones? No, no, like, no, 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 like <laughs> Apple earbuds. Oh, Apple I earbuds. I don't know. These came with my Samsung phone. Samsung? Yeah. You're not even Apple at all. You were confusing me. Come on. <laughs> I would not use an Apple product. I I prefer the company of, of females. I don't, I don't oh, know geez. why I'm making Apple is gay jokes from a decade ago, but hey, should we get started with the show now that the audio is good? I believe so, because okay. we don't want to have any more outdated jokes before the interview. No, yeah, we want to save all those outdated jokes for the interview. <laughs> of course. Yeah, okay. All right, I'll get us started then. Very, very nice. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite interview program. That's right. It's the Monkey Jonas interview show, everybody. I am very sorry. I know I know. I promised you Drake Bell would be the guest on the next episode, but we had another scheduling snafu. He has to go to court today about his bankruptcy. He said he will try to get in for episode four of the Monkey Jones interview show. We're going to talk about his work on Drake and Josh and how he wants to have a reunion show so that he can once again speak to Miranda Cosgrove, quote, now that she's old enough. I don't know what he meant by that, but maybe we will find out next time. So today, uh, he was very kind to agree to come at last minute after Drake Bell flaked on us. Mr. YouTube extraordinaire, he recently hit 100,000 subscribers. He has a static that just won't quit. Mr. Daft Pina, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. You are, and you kind of sound like this is the freaking WWE. Welcome, wrestler fans. This That's man right. killed three birds within his lifetime and Th sat down next to Rosa Parks. Three this birds with one Jameson stone. Johnson. That's right. <laughs> I gotta hype everybody up for Daft Pina. He's a big get for this show. For this show. Are you kidding me? Who else did we have on this fucking show? Some some no name Siva Gunner who doesn't even have a YouTube channel anymore? Boring. Boring. We have a man who is in the prime of his success and only getting better. Mr. Daft Pina, for those who have not 
heard of your work. Could you just give us a brief summary of who you are and what you do on the YouTube sphere? Before we do that, okay. I like to interact with the chat. Mizergi42, tell Daphne to do a crazy taxi impression. I can do that. Can we okay. do that? Okay. Hey, welcome back to Crazy Taxi. Oh, uh, is that it? That's the, that's the impression. Yeah, that's the impression. Uh, I was hoping... That's the uh, announcer. Okay, um, if I send you $10 on PayPal, will you do the entire interview in that impression? I don't think my voice can last that long. <laughs> <laughs> so, Daft Pina, what do you do on YouTube other than make uh, I... Quentin Reviews cry? He's doing better. I can say that. Okay. However, good. on my channel currently, or do you want me to start from the beginning? Uh, let, let's... Let... Take us back to the past to play the shitty games that suck ass. I actually met uh, James Rolfe at a convention once. Now, is this more or less impressive than meeting the Nostalgia Critic? I've never met him. Well, because so uh, uh, Siva Gunner, say... Gunner said he met Nostalgia Critic, so I'm going to see Ooh. who has the better story between the two of you. I actually you. met uh, Nostalgia Critic's brother at a rock concert. Uh, what's his name? Seven years ago. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck his stupid brother. What, what was James Rolfe like? Did he did he call you a piece of fucking shit? Did he, oh, did no. he shoot um, all, all over you? He was actually quite nice. In oh. fact, the line for him was three times as long than an actual video game voice actor. Like Ooh. an actual video game voice actor was there, but people were flocking to James Rolfe's. So much so that they, in order to get done with everyone... He can only sign autographs and not even take pictures. He said, I'm sorry, guys. Aww. There's like 100, 200 people in this line to get through. But I did have a, a small chat and I was like, hey, I like your stuff. He signed my DVD copy of the first season and a uh, game cartridge. I also had the opportunity, well, the potential opportunity to take a, a photograph with a famous person. Um, and I fucked it up. It was... Uh, uh, this little known guy, you might have heard of him. His name is Donald J. Trump. Long before he ran for president, he came to speak at my college. And I, I went and saw him do it. It was about an hour long of him just sitting there saying shit that I didn't even comprehend at all. A bunch of business jargon bullshit. And afterwards, yeah. you could have waited in line, shook the man's hand, mm. and took a photograph. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go sit into the last 10 minutes of the class I'm missing rather than wait in line to meet Donald Trump. I have nightmares, nightly, oh, that man. I could have taken a photo with the next fucking meme president. And I, would, I went to sit in for the last 10 minutes of an English class lecture instead. I think I might actually kill myself now that I'm thinking about this again. How did I, mean I fuck that up? At least you're continuing your education, not meeting yeah. some silly president of the United States. You're just, I'm just going to send to this English class. Can you imagine the meme potential of an actual photograph of me shaking hands with Donald Trump? It would, it, man. People would say it looked Photoshop. They're like, ah, oh, he yeah. didn't do that. That's not Monkey Jones. The Verge, who was going to write a very liberal uh, media organization, they were going to write an article about me getting banned. That would have been the cover photo of the article. Mumkey Jones shaking hands with Mumkey, Donald Trump. Mumkey what, Jones, what, what I told alt-right him. YouTuber. That's right. Well, alt-right former YouTuber. Would have told them everything they needed to know about me. Anyway. It's like that one picture. They always use a PewDiePie in every media. It's, I can't remember what it was. It was PewDiePie smiling in front of like a green background. <laughs> I don't know why they always use that picture. And even Pewds complains about it. He's like, why do they keep using... If you this Google picture. his name, is it just the first image that pops up? Uh, let's try. Okay. Yeah, yeah this is important. This is important. It is. Uh, no. What? So they're well, going out of their way to use it, this photo? When you search it on Google Images, yes. It's uh, this oh. one. In front of a Barnes & Noble? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're just so lazy, they just click on the very first fucking photo. Well, it is a high-resolution picture. If you, um... Oh, gee. When I type in PewDiePie... Other suggestions is PewDiePie apologizes, N word, Comedy <laughs> Central. You know for his Comedy Central roast. What he he was on a roast? No. Oh. No, it's just one of the search results that happens to be right oh. there. I know he was on an episode of South Park like three years yes, ago. Yes, he was as himself. That's right. Making fun of himself. I'm glad yeah. uh, he was able to take the joke. He yeah, really he's a he's a very self aware, funny guy. I like PewDiePie. 
But enough about YouTubers we like. Let's talk about ones we want to criticize because want to criticize. That, that that's is, what I do. That's what you do. That's right. We finally answered the question. Finally, getting back to the answer, what my channel is about. I mostly criticize YouTube animators and YouTube animation. It first started. Actually, I'll tell you how it first started. Back in 2016, late 2016, I was on a call with one of my friends, and they were like, have you ever seen The Odd Ones Out? And I was like, who? <laughs> and he's like, he's a story time animator. And I was watching a video with him. He's like, all right, this is this is okay. And he said, there's more of them. And I was like, what do you mean there's more of them? He said, there's a bunch of them. And he gave me like a giant list. And I was like, all right, let me just take a look at them. And then about a week after, uh, we called again. And I was like, I... I want to make a video about this because at the time I was making boring videos about cartoon reviews. Mm. I say boring because when I rewatched one recently, I was like, it's just me reading off Wikipedia stats. This ain't this ain't a video. Wait, so you and were so, you were reviewing cartoons or you were reviewing cartoon reviewers? I was reviewing adult oriented cartoons. So like Brickleberry, for example. Yes, that is one of the ones I yeah. did. There you go. That's a good uh, one to review. Lots to mine from that quality program. It was a Brickleberry, 12 ounce Mouse. What else did I review? It was a bunch of one, even so much so. I think there's 200 or 300 technically adult oriented American animated shows, and I wanted to get through all of them. Oh shit! But that's, you, that's your monkey box. You have to return to it one day. I am kind of. Uh, as you can see on my channel, they're not there anymore. Uh, because I wanted to switch over to something more interesting. You know, because I wanted to have something that actually you had passion about. Like, I loved reviewing the cartoons, but like I said before, the videos are just boring. And so I dive deep into animation reviews. Did these old videos of yours have the same uh, delivery style as the, the new content? Oh, definitely not. They were oh. more of a standard Yoto personality. Oh, oof. That was... Hi guys, what's up? I'm taking a look at this cartoon. But not that extreme. Not that extreme. So However, you, you were inspired by The Odd Ones Out, uh, your hatred, I assume, of him, that you wanted to jump into a whole new genre. Not the hatred. Don't don't put words in my <laughs> mouth. I would never. I would never put anything in your mouth, Daft Pina. Well, no, thank you. <laughs> we got it here, folks. Um... No, but slowly, slowly I realized, hey, this is pretty fun. Because most of my private videos was me doing a cartoon review, then me doing a story time animator review. You know, like one off the other. And so finally I was like, I don't really like doing these cartoon reviews anymore. I'm just going to stick with YouTuber animation. Because what I realized is that even though my reviews is over someone else, I started noticing that other people got inspired to improve their own stuff with my content. And that's what I like to see. Is there any chance, maybe through some sort of Patreon thing, that these old, forgotten Daft Pina videos could one day see the light of day? Oh, actually, well, without Patreon. I made a second channel. Oh. That, a little backstory. With my... Uh, cartoon reviews. I was editing them off of my old laptop. Old enough... Okay, you know a little bit about computers, right? <laughs> I mean, I I know that the monitor is not the computer. Does that okay, count? Okay, good. Um, let me, okay, let me toast the audience. My laptop had a dual-core processor. It had a mobile graphics card, 2 gigabytes of VRAM, uh, a Intel Core i5-5500U, which is 2.2 gigahertz of power. Basically, if I were to render the video, it would take about four or five hours. No! <laughs> like, for a 10-minute video? For a regular 10-minute video. Fuck! So... Oh, hey, it's Ishmael. That's my friend. Anyway, um, and so for these videos, I wouldn't export at the full uh, quality, you know, maximum bit depth or maximum uh, resolution. Mm-hmm. And so what I want to do is, let me send you this. This is my second channel. I want to take time to re-export on my built PC these old videos so you can actually enjoy them 
They're not properly lit. The audio is probably not that good. But I still want to give people the quality that I can try and achieve with this new stuff. So one day, if people go to Extra Daft, they can see all these Brickleberry reviews. The Brickleberry reviews and all the other reviews and my live streams that I want to start archiving. All right, now that we have a, a general basis of who you are, I would like to tell the story of how I discovered the Daft Pina channel. You probably already oh, yes. know this. But... Tell me, and then I'll tell you how I discovered your channel. Oh, perfect. So it all started when I was making a video about a guy who made a content cop video about me. And uh, he, he was listing off why I'm not the perfect YouTuber. And in fact, <laughs> in his mind, the perfect YouTuber is somebody with a, a cozy, dark aesthetic and blah, 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 all this shit. So, I remember that one. <laughs> and, uh, he in the process, you lonely in a cold, dark room in a basement, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and he, he cited Quentin Reviews as the ultimate example of this. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, once you find your aesthetic, that's right. you find it. And in the process of making that video, I found a, a tiny little three subscriber channel called Jeremiah the Gamer who fit all of these categories. And Jeremiah the Gamer was reviewing me. So in my content cop video, I showed off Jeremiah's video and I thought Jeremiah was really funny. He had this, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do my impersonation of him. He had this, and he's, it's like a 12 year old kid. So it's very funny coming from him. He had this delivery that was essentially like, so, in the case of the personality of Monkey Jones, I give him a score of 7 out of 10. And I thought, I, remember that one. I thought that was so fucking funny. I loved the way he talked. So I post that video, Daft Pina, and yes, you won't believe attention. what all the comments said. They said that Jeremiah the Gamer is just doing an impression of Daft Pina. And I thought, first of all, I thought, no. No. I, I, the great I was Jeremiah the Gamer. I was so hopeful copy. that Jeremiah the Gamer legitimately spoke like that in his everyday <laughs> life. Because it was so fucking funny. So the fact that he was ripping off somebody else made me sad. But then I I said, Who the fuck's this Daft Pina? And I look him up and I was like, Oh yeah, yeah, Jeremiah is ripping off Daft Pina <laughs> to a T. That's, so that's, that's how I found you. How did you find me? I found you back in late 2016, actually. It was... I kept seeing this video recommended. Uh, I don't remember the main title. It was something to do with why Diary of the, the new Diary of the Wimpy Kid movie sucks. <laughs> yeah. That movie kept getting recommended to me on YouTube, and I was like, all right, fine, I'll go check this guy out. It was so old. It wasn't even live action. It was your... Poorly drawn monkey holding that body <laughs> pillow. And I was like, hey, this guy's pretty funny. And that's how I'm here today. Wow. God bless. Thank God for YouTube recommendation. Back when the algorithm helped me and didn't kill me. What are you going to do, though? Start All right. a secret channel. So you, you've made dozens of videos criticizing the mostly the storytime animators. And I would like to hear about the darkest tales of this. Has anybody reacted to your criticism so strongly that perhaps maybe you even feared for your own safety, Daft Pino? What was the worst reaction from any of these people who you criticized on your channel? Let me preface this. Okay. Okay. Um, for the few exceptions of the people who haven't reacted, like, here, let me go through my plays real fast. Okay. Um... Nearly everyone who I made a video about, I'm now in contact with. And I'm actually made amends with them. Par. Par from Tomska. Okay. Par from Tomska. Uh, Fox Goodman. Foot of a Ferret. And Young Don the Sauce God. However, I'll tell you the story of Young Don the Sauce God. So now my video about... Don, I'll just call him Don, was not even technically about him. It was about someone else who criticized Don. Okay? Okay. And so the video was mainly about if you were to expose Don, here's how you should do it. And so I got in contact with the guy exposing him, uh, King Science. 
And I talked to King Science. Is like, Science, do your thing. Like, I know you hate Dawn. It's not getting you anywhere. Just do your own thing. This is after I made the video about it. Guess what happened nearly half a week? I'd say half a week later. He dropped a big exposed video. He already had an exposed video. Well, a, but he a better made a one. Second one yeah. on Instagram okay. showing that Don traces still. Okay. And he kept tweeting at Don. Don finally snapped. Don went off on Twitter, rightfully so, mind you, saying, Boy, why do you keep stalking me? Just because I read your message two years ago doesn't mean you can keep stalking me. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> he went off on science, and science sent me the message, and I was like, yeah, you should have left him alone. Because now, young Don, who has, I don't know, I can't remember off the top of my head how many subs he has, but just enough that now King Science is known for the guy trying to suck up or trying to take down young Don the South God. So you single-handedly ruined this man's reputation by convincing him to make a second video. Can no, 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 no. We can I didn't blame convince you. him to make a second video. Mm -hmm. I told him, just make your own content because he animates, right? Okay. And I, I wanted him to get better. And I was like, don't worry about Don. He's doing his own thing. And King Science did his own thing. <laughs> so, so that was the worst reaction that you've prompted with uh, one of your videos then? I would say technically that is the worst reaction considering that I try my best to get in contact with the people I actually review. How often does that work? And, and more importantly, how do you approach somebody who is famous on YouTube? If, if these people watching at home want to sneak into their DMs, what is the Daft Pina method of getting in these people's ear? Well, you have to, well, I'll tell you a story about okay. my, uh, college teacher uh, my college teacher they like to be called professors i think it's f <laughs> fine. don't call him mr call him professor my professor with a doctorate degree in science <laughs> once met steven spielberg on a plane is and that how he got his degree <laughs> no uh she didn't fan out she didn't do anything extravagant the first thing she did she did something cool she asked the flight attendants, you know, the people who serve, <laughs> yeah. she said, yeah. can you send a drink to Mr. Steven Spielberg? Oh. She sent his drink over. And then he got the drink. He looked at her and he's like, all right. And so they talked like people. She wasn't like, oh, my favorite movie is this that you made. I love this thing. What are you working on? No, she just talked with him as a person. Because at the end of the day, these people I've been talking with, uh, Andrea Cerbea, and Quentin, right? The Fear Razor, all the people I talk to, at the end of the day, they're still people. And so if you want to get in contact with them, do your thing, right? Don't you have have approach as a fanboy. Approach, Don't approach as, as a, fanboy. a boy. And girl? There's, there's no girls watching. You don't need to give advice to girls. <laughs> Hashtag rude monkey Jones. <laughs> Come on. I assumed but, um, so many genders with that statement. Arrest me. Actually, there was an episode of Family Guy recently where Peter becomes transgender. <laughs> well, I I'm keeping up with Family Guy. How recent was this? Uh, yesterday. Oh, okay. I didn't watch last night's episode yet. Peter becomes Ooh, trans okay. in the new Family Guy. This okay, I need to hear I your adult I cartoon review. It. I won't spoil it, but... <laughs> It could have been better. <laughs> really? The jokes worked. The jokes worked, and it had a good message. Wow. Yeah, because I, I know they recently said they're going to try to cut back on gay jokes. I guess uh, uh, they, uh, of the LGBT, they only want to get rid of the G jokes. Uh, go all in on the, the transgender jokes. Or, or did they well, Remember, not, they actually they? have a transgender character on there. Who, Quagmire's uh, dad? Quagmire's mom. Oh, well. I can't, I can't believe... <laughs> You knew who I was talking about, and you just misgendered. Well, be it started <laughs> off as his dad. I mean, it isn't, cool. isn't the plot that Brian has sex with Quagmire's dad? <laughs> yes. That was awesome. one of the plots. Great. That was one of the plots. 
So it, so the way you get into these people ear people's ears is that you just send them a message as a normal human being saying, "Hey, I'm making a video about you. Would you like to talk about it?" Kind of crazy. Earlier, I would email them. Aims like, "Oh, hey, I'm making this video about you. Would you like to do a voice for it?" Oh. Because a lot of them, they're cool with collabs, right? It's just a collab. And then when I start talking to one of them, I start talking to more of them, and they're quite nice people. Because remember, they're not these animation gods. Uh, they're not these spirits with booming voices and a big following. No, they're just they're just people just doing their thing, drinking Lacroix right next to a, a Monkey Jones, <laughs> Junkie Jones, a Junkie so, Jones. So just because somebody perhaps has a following on the internet, they are still normal human beings and should be treated not as royalty, but as your fellow man. Well, unless they are royalty, I guess. Well. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know too many royal YouTubers. I, imagine Prince Charles just becoming a YouTuber. Is that the balding one? Uh, Prince Charles. Let's double check. Because number one royal, uh, 97, is it? Let me double check. Yes, Prince Charles is the son. Yes, is the son of Elizabeth. But Eliz uh, was it Elizabeth II's husband crashed his car recently. Oh no, Princess Diana all over again. Now here's the thing. He's 97. Uh-huh. Behind the wheel. <laughs> and he crashed the car immediately. Prince <laughs> Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. They took his license away. Now here's the thing. He didn't get hurt at all. The person he crashed into got severely injured. <laughs> And I was like, Prince Philip, are you doing okay? <laughs> are you doing okay? Wait, so he's still the prince at, at age 97. I don't think he's, he's going to usurp the throne anytime soon. Probably someone older than him is still alive. That's how <laughs> the Queen of England is still kicking it. Well, I don't think he's going to make it. That's he's never going to be a king, only a prince. All right, so let's flip it. I asked about your worst experience. What's the best one? Have you ever criticized somebody so good that they actually changed and fixed their content for the better based off of the Daft Pina method? Yes. Whoa. Uh, Jesus, did I scare you? <laughs> you did scare me. I've never heard of somebody actually taking criticism online, perhaps because I only have ever spoken to the PCP, uh, Quentin Reviews. Uh, <laughs> that's about it. He's getting better slowly. Okay. Slowly. Um, well, keep in mind that most of the people I'm in contact with have improved, be it with my video or just on their own. But the best, the best video that I've done in terms of someone improving is the Fear Razor. Uh, the Fear Razor used to hire artists to draw for him. And then he slowly couldn't pay them. He didn't credit them properly. Oof. But I made my video and I talked with him. And guess what he's now doing? He's making them pay him to draw his work. No, he was inspired to start drawing on his own. Oh. And he's actually working on 3D animation along with 2D. That's so a good case of someone improving. You 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 inceptioned this idea into his brain <laughs> that he should become his own artist. You're a hero. Well the, well mostly I was going for uh he should credit his artists and stuff like that. And he but realized, he back, instead of having to pay people, he's like, nah, fuck this, I'll just do it. <laughs> eventually, if you have, um, if the workload is too much on you, I would recommend uh, getting a team of animators. However, uh, this is one of my old gripes. Uh, Jane Animations, uh, she used to have a bunch of artists who went off model. You know what I mean? Completely like, off model so on like her character. It, it didn't look like her old stuff at all? It didn't look like the stuff, and he knew it was someone else. And so if you were to get a team of people, make some character reference sheets, you know, like... Here, let me show you my favorite. Uh, okay. There's this King of the Hill do's and don'ts. Let me find the actual post. You can show this on screen if you want. Okay. But the animators for the show King of the Hill made this list of animation tricks and relationship tricks such as character A would never do this, or character B 
yeah, we do this. I saw one about how to uh, desexualize Peggy. Is that what you're talking yes. about? Yes. Yeah. And no high fives. There's no high and fives Dale in the show? There's no there's no high fives, technically, in the way to describe in this on the show. Oh, why not? I wonder why they would not do that. You should scroll down to the actual po- it's number twenty one. Oh, oh, there's more than just the one image. There yeah, I sent you a link. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I what the fuck? Okay, I just clicked on the one. Oh, okay, here we go. So if you are gonna get your animation team, make sure you're paying them properly. Of course. And make sure that they're on model, that they follow your direction. Because remember, if your channel is called Monkey Jones and Monkey Jones animates and his team members don't follow the animation team, the animation guidelines, is it really Monkey Jones or is it Monkey Jones and his friends? Yeah, that's I think that's why maybe when I would have a video edited by uh, Emperor Lemon's girlfriend or by Bedhead Bernie, people very quickly realize I did not (laughs) make the video but at least Mm -hmm. their style and their editing is far better than i would ever be after 10 years of practice so if if anything it just makes my normal videos look worse by comparison (laughs) it's a very opposite um, problem uh to work on your editing Uh, what program do you use (laughs) you don't want to know man it doesn't matter (laughs) do you use sony vegas are you one of those no I, I use Cyberlink Power Director 15. Cyberlink Power Director 15. I told you not to ask. You don't want to know. It's oh, we need to get you the no. Adobe Suite. No. We need to get you the Adobe Suite. I refuse. It is a wonderful program set, and you'll love the way everything interacts together. Premiere, After Effects, everything. The way I see it, at the end of the day, I'm just reviewing like fucking monkey movies and shit. <laughs> So I don't need some top of the line bedhead Bernie editing for any of I, I I like the cheaply made aesthetic of a Monkey Jones video. And I think I think that's if I had to provide criticism to the everyday YouTuber, I think that is something I would say. Do what you like. Don't try to emulate others. Don't try to don't try to be a TV show. Try to be you. As a YouTuber, would you agree with that, or do you think people should always try to improve uh, their their production and all that jazz? Let me put it this way. Do you know YouTuber Mr. Render? <laughs> Boy, do I. The mysterious Mr. Render. Yeah. He has been on the internet, or at least his YouTube channel, has been here since 2013. Possibly he made a second channel. I'd have to research him more. However, through his whole time... He still edits the same. He still has the same blue snowball microphone. <laughs> yeah, I, I would recommend has... upgrading the microphone. <laughs> Don't use and a fucking blue snowball. For nearly six years, he's have nearly the same content in terms of you can have a style. However, in terms of I'll explain more of this later for good examples. But if you there's a difference between having a style and never improving. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think what you're saying is his channel is a non-animated atrocity. His channel, and he even actually paid uh, other people to edit for him. Sometimes. Too much. N- never pay your editors. Bedhead Bernie, he will never get a penny of my money. <laughs> Fuck him. You should pay. Not exposure. Not no, exposure. I didn't even expose him. I, I don't even post in the comments that he did it. <laughs> it's just fuck him. What's he going to do? <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna record this stream and make a verge article about it no <laughs> youtuber former ex twitch streamer monkey jones refuses to pay, pay underage Editors. boy well yeah boy. do you edit all of your videos because your videos have a a very very precise aesthetic and i i can see you perhaps losing your mind if you had to explain every little nuanced detail to a, a sub editor. I edit my own videos. However, if I were to hire an editor, I would go with them and like make a uh, what they call production bible. It's a, a production bible in film is two different things, but I'll just for now call it a production bible. Uh, for how I edit things, it wouldn't be. T- if you can't explain how to do what you do to someone else, then how do you know what you're actually doing? Right. And uh, when I watch your videos, 
there is such it's it's really what is the term for something that is not what you would expect something that is not standard a subversion of your expectations from the last jedi perhaps yes because you, you've you've got these things where you're it's like between two pines with uh, zach galifianakis but it's the the uh, wes anderson version of that where everything the whole frame is parallel with each other and mm -hmm. uh, you get this fucking painting behind you where did all of th these choices come from? You you will randomly hit a key on a piano uh, all the time. Where did this come from? We'll start off with some of the easier ones. Oh, did I um, did I, I get the name of the Zach Galifianakis show wrong? Did I not say between two ferns? Between two ferns. What did I say? Pines? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you, said, you said pine tree. Fuck! My favorite episode, which I I need to rewatch them. But I remember one of my favorite episodes was. Zach Galifianakis interviewing Obama <laughs> and then like the set falls down and Obama says, have, have you been filming in the white house? Uh, like I think Obama been... doesn't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> these aren't the easy ones. I used to live in a apartment complex, a very nice one. In fact, that the people who threw out stuff, they threw out weird expensive stuff or stuff that you would think, Huh, why why didn't they sell this? Uh, my first encounter with this is when I found a original Nintendo DS just lying on the ground next to the dumpster. <laughs> what? And I was like, does this thing still work? So I ran home. I ran to my apartment. I didn't have a charger. So I had to wait a week, and I bought a charger, and it worked perfectly fine. And I was like, okay. What cartridge was in the console? No cartridge. Ah, no not cartridge. even Nintendo dogs. Even... Not even a ten dogs. What the fuck? Well, but that painting you see, which probably costs fifty to a hundred at like a regular store. It's probably size, like for, for, because of the size, it's probably like one fifty. I would say it's big. It was just near the trash. Someone threw it away. <laughs> so I cleaned it off. It's a reproduction. Uh, that's why I was e easily able to disinfect it and everything. Because mm. I don't take I don't take stuff like that and not disinfect it. And that fake plant. That. I actually went to a. Uh, do you know what a Hobby Lobby is? Yeah, do they haven't worn yet. Yeah, I think, Hobby I think they uh, they also famously are anti-gay in that everybody tries to boycott them. But all the people who say that don't even have one in their city. A actually a good place is Michaels. It's the main difference between them. Well, besides they actually love the gay people, is they're okay. open on Sundays. Mm. So that's a tough competition right there. But this plant. Uh, they sell plants like these at Hobby Lobby for about 100 to 200 bucks Fuck. based on the slides. And I liked it. Like, I found one, again, next to the same fucking dumpster. And I was like, <laughs> Do you just hang out by this dumpster all the time waiting for people to drop hidden treasures for you? Uh, no, whenever I'm with my roommate, I was like, here, I'll take out the trash. <laughs> and I was like... I don't I don't go into the freaking thing. That's disgusting. <laughs> you don't dumpster just, dive for it. I don't for physically treasure. dumpster dive. You remember those YouTube videos? Where it was like dumpster diving at GameStop. <laughs> no. There's a whole trove of them. No, I don't and do people that. Would I get just games look. and shit. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, a thing they would do is actually when they buy used DS games, they would throw away the box mm. because it takes up space. So you can find. How, um, Heglin made a good joke. Daphina found a perfectly good pizza next to the dumpster. <laughs> uh, speaking of, of that genre, you ever seen those YouTube videos of the guy diving with, with full scuba gear into a septic tank? I haven't seen that. That's a, It's a classic. He's brave. <laughs> but I don't know why he's doing it. <laughs> uh, they said it came from that. However, I do want to replace the plant because for the longest time, I even went to a subreddit a subreddit for identifying plants. <laughs> I took a picture of this and I was like, can please someone tell me what this plant is? Because I wanted to get a second one. Was the answer plastic? No, they never gave an answer. Hmm. And so I'm just I'm just thinking, hey. Oh, hey, Bedhead Bernie. He's in the chat now. Yeah. The aesthetic came from walking near a dumpster. Yeah, the aesthetic came from walking near a dumpster. It did. <laughs> At the very least for my current setup. <laughs> Your channel is literally inspired by trash. 
that's what I review as well. <laughs> yeah. All right, do we do you have any more to elaborate on this aesthetic or should we move on to some Patreon questions? Um I like having fun with the audience. Um that's why in my newest video I just have a piano for right. some reason. <laughs> yeah, you just keep hitting and notes in my, and it, it's so impactful even though it's totally meaningless. In my Andrea video, uh was it my Andrea video? I just said, no, no, it wasn't. It was my Quentin Reviews video. Another great video. Another great video where, for no reason, I can send, I'll send you the exact time. Um, I was trying to, I was actually in front of a green screen, right? Here's the exact time. And I, t I put two effects on, and I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. Do you see what happened? Where it's like it's a mosaic where it's pixelated, but it's also yeah. I'll, fuzzy. I'll pull it up for the uh, for the stream real quick. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, hey, that's pretty funny." And so for the whole section, that's how he feels with it. I just have that going on, and I don't mention it. <laughs> okay, here it is for uh, the people at home. <laughs> so you just here it is for the people. You have this chaos going on, and it means nothing. You just thought it was funny. Yeah, I just chuckled. I was like, "Hey, what if I do this?" <laughs> That's the it's it's true <laughs> artistry I think is that there is no actual meaning behind the choices you just thought it was funny. Yes, yeah, sometimes the best choices is just a chuckle. It's just a chuckle out of you. <laughs> All right, folks, I decided to make this show more monkey fan friendly. Each episode I would take some questions from the good folks over at patreon.com/monkey. Of course, the the guest will always receive a a a percentage of my Patreon earnings that month for coming on the show because clearly people are subscribing just so they can ask these Patreon exclusive questions. I didn't know you were giving away money. You should have let in with that. I would have done this earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna send you uh, uh eight hundred dollars right after the show. So eight hundred. Yeah. Just to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's right. So uh the the first question from the Patreon questioners is from Fat Dink 420 he wants to know, tits or ass? An age-old question. Yeah. Don't fuck this up. People might call you gay if you pick the wrong one. Can you imagine the first time that was asked by someone? I imagine back, it was in caveman in times. <laughs> Grug knock. Chest or butt. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Choose wisely. Is that your answer? You. C can you answer it in the voice of Crazy Taxi? Crazy Taxi. Oh, oh someone reposted the uh, Quentin. Uh, uh, do you want to? Do you, you want to read it? that as a caveman? Um, here's the thing. I fucking hate Trump. He embarrasses me every day. In cave. <laughs> he said he'd build wall in front of cave. I see no wall. <laughs> Do you think the caveman has a similar beard? I'd I'd say uh, cavemen are probably pretty hairy. Yeah, probably. No razors. All right. Okay. Well, maybe maybe we'll leave that question on the table for now for you to percolate. Let's move I'll, on. I'll, I'll wonder. I'll ponder. I get back to you. Yeah. I wonder because maybe tweet it out. Me tweet. Hey monkey! I got my answer. I like those big milkers. Ah uh, yes. Yeah. I don't know why I sound like a very like a a war veteran who can barely hear but still wants to be a part of the NASCAR race. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I like this. Whoa. The Why one now? enjoyable thing about NASCAR is being able to hear it. Why is he even there? He's we going left. Yeah, now, keep going left. Here's a Patreon a Patreon user who I think their username is a personal attack against me. He's called You Should Upload More. Yes, you. Uh his question for you is have you ever made a video that you deeply regret other than the Brickleberry review where I, I assume you said some very harsh things about Daniel Tosh or at least think you could have made much better? What is the biggest mistake in your YouTube career? I made this one video two years ago, actually, called Jaden Faked Her Face Reveal. I don't know if you saw it. I did not. But let see me it. tell you, it was not a good video. <laughs> not a good video. Uh, but luckily... I apologized to her for that. I was like, I'm sorry for ever making that video. And you know what happened? She told you to kill yourself. No, she forgave me. What? 
she did and i was like wow i am one of her friends i'm not enjoying this theme of famous people actually being human with human responses this is just blowing my mind today (laughs) well here's the one thing one of her youtube friends despite her forgiving me they still hate me for ever making that video (laughs) and i and i won't say who it is that'd be rude but i'm like okay i guess apologies don't work even though i fully regret ever making that video how long was that video up before you took it down a year fuck (laughs) you you didn't take it down after five hours and then copy strike all the re-uploads I would, no, copyright striking re-uploads is rude. Because mostly people are just doing it to archive the video. Yeah. Actually, someone did archive uh, the video. It's still up on YouTube. Oh, let's watch it on stream. Fuck no, it's 30 minutes. (laughs) It's it's the worst, it's the best example of someone says they hate content in terms of how I talk. Because that video is long. It's long, (laughs) virtually unfunny. (laughs) And I don't know what was going through my mind. But I was super mean spirited when I wrote it. I don't know what happened. And so I regret making the video. But hey, at least the person who I made it over is not mad at me. They don't hate me. And I'm thankful. Praise Jeepus. That's right. Live (laughs) and learn, folks. Everybody makes mistakes, even the great Naftapina. Speaking of uh, perhaps your delivery, maybe that video uh, read at a normal speed wouldn't have been 30 minutes but let's see who did this. Uh, the Great Moose Quan Zhu would like to know, what's with the super dry delivery? Is that just a personality you choose to use, or is that actually you? Well, hopefully they're in the stream to figure out that's not how I talk. <laughs> yeah. But I like doing the personality. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it really is. You know, from all the loud YouTubers, the loud and fast-talking YouTubers, just to find... Because I still get comments where it's like, I like your videos. If you talk so slow, you got good points, but I don't like your voice. <laughs> Do you get comments like that every single day? Every single day. And I'm like, because <laughs> I get responses from other people saying, okay. <laughs> Just responding to them like, that's okay that you don't like it. <laughs> Just respond with like a sad face, sad emoji. Sad like, face. It really I'm hurt trying your my feelings. best. Sad face. It's like Rusty Cage, He every day he has a kid asking him to make more knife game. You guys have just got to start replying with sad faces to every single one. Sad face, make more knife game. Yeah, maybe they'll apologize to you for insulting you. So so the whole the whole gimmick is just, again, because you think it's funny. Yeah, I think it's yeah. funny. Yeah, I, I think it's very funny, too. Uh, I was showing uh, my girlfriend Sheep over your, your newest video, and she's like, mm-hmm. she said, how can people watch this? <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What is fucking hilarious?" <laughs> like, One hundred thousand people can't be wrong. Every, it'll take a four-second pause between words in the same sentence. <laughs> it's fucking great. And uh, I mean, she liked it from Jeremiah. I don't know why she doesn't like it from you. I don't like it. I don't know why. I don't know why. Were you a big fan of Jeremiah the Gamer? Do you? Are you, are you going to make uh, an exposed video on him? I think I've talked to him before, but he has publicly stated he's moving away from that personality and right. trying to develop something on his own. I think the the newest update is that he has quit YouTube completely because it was Why? too boring. What What do you That's like the same excuse that Leafy gave. Yeah. Leafy said I left YouTube because it it got a bit boring to me. I was like, "What? Boring." Yeah. It's just a coincidence that both of their view counts were we're depleting, and then they get bored. Just a coincidence. Like when Nixon left office because, ah, eh, he wasn't feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Joshua Hopkins would like to know, who is your favorite and least favorite Storytime animators, and why? Oof, that's a tough question. That's a tough on-the-spot question. My least favorite. I had to go through my list. Um... I guess I haven't talked about te- I haven't technically talked about a specific story time manager in a while. My least favorite will be Billy But Better. Billy I'll But explain. Better. Billy But Better. I made a video about him. Uh, I asked him if he wanted to be in it. He said no. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he said he liked how the video turned out. 
But on Twitter, I'd say sometime last year, he added me saying he lied about it and he actually hated, <laughs> hates me and the video. Wow. So much so that this was around the time when my Fox Goodman video about tracing. So much so that Billy But Better said tracing is okay. <laughs> and I was like, what? This guy went off the deep end. Like, he could hate me. But he just said tracing art is okay. <laughs> and I was like, Billy, jeez. I mean, oof. I don't know. Oof. But my favorite one. Um, I think Cypher Den. Cypher Den's a pretty fun. Uh, it's not Spetchy? Speechy? No. What, what's her fucking name? How do you pronounce that shit? I pronounced it Speechy because there's one E. Yeah. But apparently it's Speechy. Uh, Speechy's not your favorite story time animator? Uh, no. Oh. oh. Wow, who could have guessed? I don't know. I mean, I made amends with her as well as yeah, yeah. Uh, the other people. Not not Billy, but better. Not Billy, but better. But who, who's your true favorite one? I already forget. I'd say Cypher Den. Okay. It's pretty fun. Speaking of this, and you clearly know a lot about animation and the ethics of tracing. So Darks, Darks I Da Moon would like to know, have you ever thought about making your own story time animations? You can dish out the criticism, but can you do it yourself? I was thinking uh, back in 2017, wouldn't it be funny if I made a parody account? But the parody account wasn't linked at all to my... I wanted to do an experiment back when Storytime Animations was blowing up. That if I make a fake Storytime channel, how fast could I get it to 100,000 subs? I never ended up doing it because I wanted to focus on my own content. However, I'd say it's too late to start doing that. I'm guessing based on YouTube trends, um, the big YouTuber, the big YouTube Storytime animators will stay afloat. But... Maybe in 2021, 2022, the genre will be dying or dead by then. I think the whole website will be dead by 2022. Uh, that could just be bias. I'm I don't hoping, know. I'm hoping. Could just be bias. Fingers crossed, baby. Let's uh, let's get uh, Vimeo. Vimeo will have its day in the sun. <laughs> that's that's my monkey guests of the day. But I do want to spend more time on my own uh, animating and whatnot. Do you do a lot of drawing and shit? Oh yeah, I love to draw. Yeah, well. I did some. Uh, I do. I like to do streams, where I draw. I want to do more of them. However, oh, on uh, YouTube or Twitch? YouTube. Oh, not a Twitch boy yet. Not a Twitch boy yet. I'll get there one day. Yeah, one of these days, we'll all uh, migrate to Twitch. That'll show and Susan. And vanilla. No, nobody's going to fucking vanilla, <laughs> dude. Okay. Vanilla. Well, no one's gonna beat you. The most sub you, the most sub vanilla. -er. <laughs> That's right, because my my content is so vanilla. All right. Uh -huh. Final uh -huh. question. Matthew Semple or Sempy asks perhaps the best question of the night or I guess day because oh. it's three p.m. over here. It, it's not that late. I want to do sometime in the afternoon. That's right. <laughs> if you were to make a Daft Pina critical review of Monkey Jones, what were your problems? with my stuff well the fun part was when i first uh contacted you i gave you a lot of helpful advice already that's right well that, that, that that's for twitch streams though i mean like the monkey twitch videos streams. i'd have to rewatch your content because what i do is i try and watch as much as i can of a person like for the tom scott video i watched all of his second channel <laughs> all of his main channel let me tell you it took three months to get yeah, through it. Yeah, I mean, you you go to fucking college. How do you have time to... And to even film the videos would be one thing, but to sit through somebody's entire catalog, how do you do that? Impatiently, sometimes with a friend. <laughs> I take a nightmare. Notes. Boy, how do, But let me tell you, um, it actually helps. When you write down the specific video in a timestamp, so I can just go back in the notes. All right, that's what that is. So right. it does help a lot. And most of the time, I don't even use any of the notes. It's just, it just helps. Yeah. So for Monkey Jones, I'd have to watch all of your content. I'd have to take a look and have to see how you can improve. Uh, improvement number one. Be on YouTube. <laughs> improvement number one. Start with your jacket on before recording. 
<laughs> no, I, I will not take criticism for my Twitch streams. They mean nothing to me. This is a waste of my time. I'm a video boy through and through. I, I refuse to even learn how to use OBS. I have my girlfriend set it up for me. OBS? <laughs> Come on. It's not that hard. <laughs> All right, that's enough of these Patreon questions. You want to you wanna get in on this, folks? All patrons of Monkey Jones, go to patreon.com slash Monkey Jones. How do people support you, Daft Pina? Where can people go if they want to support you? Well, I want to redirect the support. Well, two places, of course. Okay. So if you want to support me personally, I do have a, what they call, Ko-Fi page. Okay. Oh, like the coffee thing. Yes. Yeah. I always say Ko-Fi. But <laughs> Very confusing. Basically, I don't have a Patreon yet because if I get a Patreon, I want to make sure that it's it works, it's efficient, and that it gives people what they want. Because you know how so many a lot of Patreon Patreons are run by people who can't run them, and so there's like rewards that don't get shouldered out, or there's a lot of things that don't get sent out. You yeah. know, like if you donate ten dollars, I'll send you I'll send you a drawing, and they never do that. Yeah, I, I am guilty of this. I, I promised, hey, $25 patrons, once a month we're going to do a live stream together. And then I keep uh. forgetting to do it. But I will do it this month. Starting this month, we will start doing them again, folks. I'm so sorry. I've had a lot of shit going on. <laughs> Please forgive me. Speaking of a lot going on, I wanted to promote my friend's GoFundMe. You remember? Right. My friend, Neo, who at this time is actually homeless now. Fuck, what happened? Um, he used to, I'll, I'll post this right there. Uh, he used to live with his mom. His mom didn't pay the rent, or her portion of the rent, and so they got evicted. She went to live with her uh, family, and he lives with no one, as his family actually doesn't like him anymore. Oh. Because he's trying to film, he's trying to pursue being a filmmaker. And he actually... Uh, had to sell his camera equipment as well as most of his uh, furniture and so now he's homeless and it really it's really fucked up the uh, homeless system in his area because he is next to a shelter right he signed up to be in a shelter but he has to wait nearly a month to actually maybe get accepted into the shelter you have to submit like an application you have to submit an application to, to prove how homeless you are, I'm more homelesser than you, so I get a spot and you don't? Yes. However, he has two jobs, oh. and he has tried applied, uh, applying for apartments. But they only look at the income of one job. Oh. And yeah, so he hasn't been accepted. And so this GoFundMe, it's the least uh, we can do to help him, is basically this money goes so he can have a car. So at the very least, he has something to get to work to, something to sleep in at night. Yeah. And he used to make good content on YouTube. But of course, he's kind of homeless, so he can't make it anymore. And Does so I he still have his him. camera? Because a homeless vlog, I think, would blow up in popularity very quickly. That's, he has a phone, and that's what, that's what he wanted to work on. I was like, you, ever, you want to make a documentary? Do you want to make a homeless documentary? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd watch five minutes a day of, like, what this homeless guy did today. <laughs> like, I always wonder, where exactly do the homeless people sleep? Because I see them outside McDonald's trying to get my fries all the fucking time. When it gets really cold or when it gets dark, where do, where do you go? And I would like to see that. Usually 24-hour places, like Walmart. What, they sleep inside Walmart? They sleep, they pro usually, sometimes they sleep in the bathroom. Oh for a bit, God. or they try and find a place to sleep that's warm. Because some places understand, like, I've seen some McDonald's that just let one or two homeless people sleep in it, then tell them to leave after, like, a few hours. Mm. But have it's, you, it's have a you seen that video view. of the homeless guy who brought a, a dead raccoon into a McDonald's and it was bleeding all over the table? My pet's raccoon, please save him. <laughs> I, uh, if you're watching this interview on YouTube or monkeyjones.tv, there will be links to uh, the Ko-Fi account and to this GoFundMe down below. We got to help this, this homeless man make some vlogs. I'm not too worried uh, about my Ko-Fi. I'd, I'd rather all the money go to Neo. Well, e either way, you will be helping 
our good friend Daft Pina and his friend and and my friend Neo. All right, what do you say about taking some questions from the Twitch chat, or should we say fuck them? Let's go home. Let's take some questions from the chat. All right, chat. Rev up those friars. It's time to get Daft Pina to answer the burning questions you've had likely for decades now. Throw them in there. Oh, Bernie was hoping we would link to the video of the homeless guy with a dead raccoon. I will post that link in the description of the YouTube video as well. I don't feel like looking for it right now. But if somebody else wants to post it, I will not stop them. Because that is one of the funniest videos I think I have ever seen. I'm sure you can easily find it. There's, there's probably not too many of them. No. Just Google homeless guy raccoon and it'll probably pop up. Is, is Daft actually a piña colada? Great, great question. I still need to drink one of those. Where did Since your name I... come from, anyway? That's the question every single YouTuber gets. Why Daft Pina? Why? Yeah. Uh, Are you Daft? That's part of the joke. In <laughs> slang, Daft means crazy. And in Pina, in at least the Spanish language, Pina means the skin of a pineapple. <laughs> However, in, Hung in Hungarian, do you know what Pina means? Probably penis. It means pussy. Oh! <laughs> and so I'm now either crazy pineapple <laughs> or crazy pussy. I'm, I'm sure, thanks to your YouTube channel, you get crazy pineapples. People offer you pineapples. You thought I was going to say crazy pussy. Because us YouTubers, yeah, you'd be wrong you know. That. Yeah, people, people give me more pineapples <laughs> than, than anything else. <laughs> Is Daft Pina a sociopath? Good question. I, no. No. <laughs> Daft, did you ever get the trouble? Did you ever have trouble getting over the overabundance of bullshit comments at one point? Here's a picture of Fanta Pineapple. It's right there. The bullshit comments. Um, Daft in British slang means stupid. It means a lot of things. Grapes. <laughs> um, you get over it. Yeah. I mean, there is a difference between not accepting criticism and not reading the hate comments. Right. Especially when you get the same exact one every hour on the hour. Yeah. I think it's and part I do it like comes to. it's part of the job. You have to accept that you get it and you have to have a thick enough skin to not let it bother you, which some people oh, clearly course. can't do not have that talent. It happens. I mean, Monkey Jones wouldn't have made it this far if you listen to all the hate comments. No, no, if I listened to the hate comments, I would have killed myself three years ago. <laughs> and we are thankful that Monkey is still alive and with us today. Well, kind of. I feel like uh, all my insides have been scooped out and killed. Uh, di did you ever get a community guidelines strike in the history of your channel? Never. Whoa, we have a certified good boy. I imagine I have you have gotten, many good boy points. I've gotten some copyright claims, mostly from the cartoon reviews. Yeah. And when I made this video about Otako Studios, a known pedophile, Oof. I will say that because we actually we found video evidence of Otako Studios admitting that he bought eight hundred dollars worth of child porn from a child and blackmailed that child after he found out, quote unquote, they were a child. <laughs> wow, the rare pedophile who buys CP and then threatens to blackmail the child <laughs> seems very. I mean. It, at that point, I mean, what, what is he thinking? You, child, well, contact the, the police. It's so easy. You win. I made a video about him, and I told other people to make videos about him. Yeah. He copyright striked those videos and even got my previous Discord account terminated. Now, did the child copyright strike the CP that you showed on screen? I didn't show anything on screen. Oh, well. I mean, well, you got to cite your sources. You got to you got to prove what no, no, you're we, talking we about. We found out he did this after my video. We found out this after my video. Oh, okay. Because my video is mostly about him not paying artists. I found out about the worst stuff he did. And we're actually still, for those of you wondering why we haven't made a video about him yet, or even a part two, we're still working on behind the scenes as it is a delicate situation. And we're hoping to bring him to justice. Hmm. You, the, the internet police are on the case folks don't you worry these combat I points so. will be taken care of have you seen this people are getting banned off of youtube for having 
the CP abbreviation in their video titles when they're talking about Pokemon combat points or Club Penguin? They, sh- they should just probably list the full word. Then. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if that's the, the best points? take to have. <laughs> I, I mean, YouTube has some pretty strict... I use this uh, YouTube extension called TubeBuddy. It's free. It's wonderful. It actually lets you know if a tag or a title will get the video demonetized. Oh, I would have loved to have that about, I, what, three months ago? Would have been great. So I'd recommend it to anyone, too, buddy. It, it can also let you see other people's tags in their video, the mm. hidden tags and the hidden stuff. They put. Ooh. So it's a nice thing if you want to get trending, if you want to get popular, if you want to too be late. on top of the YouTube game. Too late. I'm hoping I don't get trending ever again. They'll ban me. <laughs> Uh, Can you no, imagine? It's called Tube Buddy. T U B E, not Toot Buddy. That's right. Not Toot. Can you imagine Chancellor Susan? Uh oh. Like her kids watching your channel. And it's like, Mom, why why did you ban this guy? He makes funny. I, no, son. I know. Did, evil. Didn't she say that her kids called YouTube Rewind cringy? Yes, their kid, her kids really hated YouTube Rewind. Maybe they're fans of Rusty Cage. Lots of kids are, mostly kids. Maybe. Um. Oh, that'd be that'd be a dark, a, a dark turn, when Susan's kids commit a shooting, <laughs> a Valentine's Day school shooting after watching the knife game. She would. They would have to replace her as CEO immediately. Oh, thank God. Well, and then you'd be able to. You'd be able to come I'm back on YouTube. What a worthy sacrifice those children have to make. <laughs> uh, Don't you say that, monkey. Oof. Don't you make it come uh, true. Oh, no. You, never, you know it's a wonderful life? Yeah, yeah. You'll, yeah. you'll make it's a wonderful life happen, but for those kids. <laughs> monkey, okay. you want that to happen? Here's what would happen if that happened. And he's, he hits you on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Shows me a whole new world. Well, what happened? Monkey. Monkey, you Where's saved you YouTube. <laughs> what? What's wrong? You haven't made a video in two days. What? On Twitch? No, silly monkey. On YouTube. What? And and then oh, we yeah. watch it every Christmas. The story of, hey, of death and suicide. That could be a fun uh, video for you. It's a, it's a wonderful monkey <laughs> where something happens and the monkey channel never... Oh, the ne- monkey channel never went away. That'd be or, pretty fun. Or if it never existed... And I'm just—it never I'm, existed. I'm, my depression is cured. <laughs> Monkey, I'm, you su- are I'm the a CEO successful of teacher. I'm making, I'm making six figures as a high school teacher. My whole <laughs> life could be better. Imagine. All right, Aqua my Dragon God. plays. Would like to know what was your favorite video to make? Some videos I imagine are more fun to make than others, especially when you have to do three months worth of research watching second channel content. Well, of course. My favorite video to make. I'd say my favorite video might have been either the Fox Goodman one or the one I just made. Because okay. the one I just made has been in the back of my mind ever since I saw Foot of Ferret's video about animation. But the Fox Goodman one. Fox Goodman, a known tracer, <laughs> had such a good opportunity, right? Like my video, I didn't expect it to get how much views it did. But imagine this. The best response to that video would have been Fox Goodman saying, you know what? I trace, but I'll get better. And that's the end of it. You know what he did? Traced harder. Yes. He said he was going to continue tracing. (laughs) He said, let's make a $100,000 GoFundMe. And you got to prove I'm Matt Spicer. I'm like, what? You could. (laughs) And so he made a follow-up video. And he said, it's okay. I talked to the odd ones out. It's all cool. I'm going to still keep tracing. And I was like, this is the opposite reaction I was expecting. Because if he just admitted, and if he just got better, because to this day, every time he uploads a video, he gets thousands of hate comments <laughs> telling him, stop tracing, and he gets game dislike bombed. I didn't mean for that to happen, but when your response is, give me $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that that's the funnest video to make because it ruined the, the man's video. comment section no because i had a fun it was so easy to find his traced images 
most of the time, if you searched up what he traced on Google, it would be the first result. <laughs> it's like clip art. It was, sometimes he would just use clip art. It's like a, a Jake Paul t-shirt. It's just clip art that he sells for 40 I saw bucks. that video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Very good series. Nerd City, he's great. He is. He's I'm going to get him on the show after Drake Bell comes on. Uh, let's do one final question. This is a big one. I hope you're ready. Are you sitting down? It's from Each He Say. He would like to know, Daft Pina, what would you do if Susan Waluigi came to your door and wanted to bang? Mm. Hmm. I'd say no thank you. Oh, oh you're, I get, would, you're getting I would terminated. Film, I would film the interaction <laughs> because she would get fired for that. I, because wh that's why? wildly inappropriate. I don't know. Coming it, coming to us using Google's knowledge to find your house <laughs> and asking a random YouTuber to bang them. That is sorts of illegal. What if her car broke down and and she could smell she could smell your painting that you found by the dump and she thought that's that smells like a painting that somebody found by a dumpster. Now now I'm getting all horned up and she came and just wanted to bang whoever opened the door. No. Uh, Bedhead Bernie says you're a MGTOW for your answer. What's a MGTOW getting? Uh, men going their own way. You say, I don't need women. I'm fine that's on my not, own. That's not what I said. <laughs> Bedhead Bernie, please don't put words in my yeah, mouth. Bernie, what the fuck? Disgusting. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. All right, Daft Pina, where can people find you online? Plug all your shit. And again, let's, let's uh, plug this GoFundMe because it's a cause I want to stand behind. There is my YouTube channel. There's my YouTube channel. Let me get my Twitter page. Just hanging out. Twitter page. Right there. In my GoFundMe. Your top right. priority should be the GoFundMe. I believe seven minutes ago, Sean B donated $15. Proud of you, Sean. I'm hey. guessing Sean's in the stream. I'm proud of him. Or her. Son, Son B Anthony. I assume Sean is uh, Sean Ranklin of Sean Ranklin. Wings of Redemption fame. <laughs> Shout well, out Sean to Kent. Sean Ranklin. And so I'm I'm glad I was able to do this interview, only for so to promote my friends GoFundMe. That's right. You said, Mumkey, I got to tell you the truth. I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you, but I really need 216 people <laughs> to hear about this GoFundMe. And I said, well, I need you drive a hard bargain, Daft, but I guess. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, it thank you out. for coming on. You were a great replacement for Drake Bell, who I assume will be on the next episode. Daft Pina, thank you again. And uh, do you have any final thoughts for the thoughts watching final at home? thoughts. For all of you people doing art and for all of you people trying your best at videos, keep at it and keep improving or else you end up like Fox Goodman. Uh, he's doing pretty like well Fox for himself, Goodman. isn't he? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. Uh, for the YouTube version, I'll, I'll cut it there. I'll cut it there. The, I think there. I think we did a, I think we had a good hour and 10 minutes daft. I think it was fun. I think the people had a good time. Usually when I interview people, it dips down to about 90 viewers. Your, your folks from Twitter, they, they stuck on through. You got some good folks. You got some they good company. 37 people liked the post, so at least maybe those 37 people just joined in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't actually watch it. <laughs> they didn't actually was like, ah, oh, good, good for him. He's doing the best. <laughs> good for him. Uh, if you uh, are when you make your Patreon, what kind of rewards do you think you want to add on there? At the very least, I want the lowest tier and every subsequent tier to be featured in the credits of my video. Yeah, that, that that's the that's the good one. People like seeing their name. I know I do. I want to give. At the very least, I want to tell people what the video is on, because I always keep in secret, even with uh, within my friend group. I try and not tell people what it is for the off chance that they might say it to someone else and it gets spoiled. Mm -hmm. uh, do that as well as for the higher tiers. I would like to draw something for people, even as Oof. a little sketch. But those are the, for the high tiers. Yeah, it better be a very high tier because that's the best way to get behind is when you have 50 drawings you need to make. Oh, yeah. At like <laughs> at 10. 
at the te- was it the uh, Patreon ten dollar subscription. I'll give everyone a drawing. Five hundred people. Yeah, good <laughs> fucking luck. Uh, uh, back in back in the old days when I first started, I said for fifty dollars I will make a, a anime review about whatever you choose. Horrible idea. What a fucking nightmare. So I, I doubled that to a hundred real quick. Even that got too much. I said, fuck it. I'm not making custom videos anymore. You're fuck all of you. You could have increased it to 500 to see if people are crazy enough yeah, well. to donate that much. Please, Mumpke, I want you to make a video about this guy. Please. Shit, Please. man. 500 bucks? Yeah, anybody watching at home, you got 500 of daddy's dollars to throw. I'll make a video for you. I like that idea. I'll throw, I'll throw that back onto the Patreon. $500. $500. Then you'll keep getting one of those, and then you'll get behind, and you'll never make the video. People will get onto you. They'll make a whole drama alert. <laughs> Twitch streamer, Mumkey Jones, scams people for $500 each. Mumkey, is this true? I don't know why you're actually on drama alert. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll briefly mention me at the end of an episode, but he won't invite me on. And then he'll yell at people, saying, fine, I did it. Stop <laughs> talking about me about it. Goth Chip Senpai says that my my donation banner is not big enough, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, there we go. Now now can you see it? <laughs> I assume they were being sarcastic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> webs. Uh, every single stream from now on, you can't even see what's. Go- I'm just gonna have it. You can sense your own face. You can't even prove it's monkey. You could no. just be his double. <laughs> my next interview, I'm gonna do it like this. <laughs> Just move it around every once in a while. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Monkey Jones interview show. I... Nice to that see you. That would be a fun thing. Uh, where I would animate like um, a transparent video for my live stream. Because I have an overlay for my stream now. And just every once in a while, my logo just falls on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mention it. It's like, <laughs> why is the chat saying my logo's gone? It's still there. Yeah, the funniest thing is uh, when you do something weird like that and you just don't acknowledge it whatsoever. <laughs> like in, in oh, that yeah. video with the pixelation, you just pretend like nothing happened. I was watching this Oni Plays about where they're playing Super Mario 64. And the Super Mario 64 was a modded one where all the sounds are changed. And I guess they made a pact because sometimes they would laugh at the at the voice and they would say like, Julian, why are you laughing? And he's like, no, no reason. <laughs> Because they would change stuff to, like, Mario screaming whenever he got hurt. Where it's like... <laughs> <laughs> and they, they never acknowledge that they're playing a modded game. Yeah. They're just like, <laughs> man, Nintendo has some weird sound design. <laughs> uh, somebody wants to know if you would debate Ben Shapiro for $10,000. I would do it for free. Uh, would you Ten, do it? $10,000. Yeah, like... W- I, can, I can debate. I won't do well. What is there even do. to debate? Like, I don't, I don't know any of Ben Shapiro's policies other than Quentin thinks he hates trans people. Is that true? Th- did he say uh, all trans people should be put in camps? He, if I remember correctly, because I had to research him a bit, he doesn't understand the transitioning. You know, he doesn't get that. Yeah, but he never says that they should be killed. He just says that he <laughs> doesn't get it, and he doesn't like it. If that makes sense. Uh. Well, I I don't think I would be the person to debate him on that because it's not my experience, so I probably could not explain the art oh, of, of the transition to him. Uh, so If you could admit that you're not good at a certain subject in debating, it's way better than just saying, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. I because mean, I, I'd rather say, I could you try. know what? I'm not going to debate, debate Ben on this. I don't know much about the topic. Let's talk about something else. Just say that, and you'll save yourself. What if yourself. Ben wanted to debate you oh on uh the best story time animator would you do that for ten thousand dollars i can do that i'll tell you that yeah. i'll get my research ready <laughs> i'll watch videos about how he does his tactics so i can beat his tactics <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've never and watched the ben shapiro uh uh argument but maybe maybe i should maybe the memes uh, are true maybe he's funny would you debate destiny uh, <laughs> is that the guy who ruined john tron yes uh does he still do i thought he got banned from twitch does he still do that i don't keep up with it oh well i mean i yeah, found i'd probably debate him because remember i found that video about uh the f- was in my quinton video someone in the comment section sent me a rational wiki about jontron 
because of course the the destiny debate is two hours long it's a bit long however this rational wiki did a great job of archiving what he said they wrote down what he said they time stamped it so if anyone wanted to watch a bite-sized version there you go did they put it in context too yes okay most of john tron's arguments if you read them is him not actually understanding <laughs> many things yeah like if you if you watch it because i bought i watched the whole thing and i was like john tron that's factually wrong <laughs> and rude and of course he apologized john tron apologized yeah. for what he said and i'm pretty sure because i'm in contact with one of his friends it's clear john doesn't think those things maybe perhaps it's he, hard to he say. has no ill will he was just literally misinformed and parroting well, false uh perhaps he's parroting statistics false, <laughs> that, false he, statistics that he read on and what i think happened uh, my friend gave me this I, this idea there's the possibility that john tron just didn't want to agree with destiny for some reason like he just didn't want to agree with destiny. Like he I don't was just know in why. the mood to argue, and he didn't yeah, realize was... the political uh, uh, implications of what he was saying. Oh yes, I am not that knowledgeable yeah. on the political stance. I'm not knowledgeable on a lot of things, and so I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to debate. So I'll just be like, I don't feel comfortable talking about this. I don't know that much. Yeah, my it's okay. when I talk about politics, it's almost exclusively in the meme realm. If somebody wanted to have an actual debate about the economy or some shit, I, I I've got oh. I've got nothing. I can't. I, was, I don't know. I don't care. I was having some good jokes on a, a previous stream with my friend. We we're just doing um we because we were talking about how Oni plays. Um, I think it was Chris does a good Trump impression, <laughs> and we were just making jokes about uh the way he talks like. Crooked Hillary does not save her games. How can we <laughs> trust a woman who doesn't save at any point in a game? She's reckless. She's very reckless. I don't trust her. Or like, I, um, I do that same thing with uh, with Bernie Sanders. I think oh, that yes. microtransactions should be free. It's, it's not the best Bernie, but it's my Bernie, and that's why it should be cherished. Oh, my favorite one. No, you did a good job. Thank you. Oh, that was probably from Zach, someone said. You're, you're right. But my favorite one was, um, Bernie Sanders doesn't have a phone case. How can we trust this man as president if he doesn't have a phone case? If he can't protect his phone, how can he protect America? Does he really not have a phone case? No, he does have a phone case. <laughs> so it's just absurd. It's just absurd, <laughs> just funny stuff. That... <laughs> And p were people in the comments getting upset that they were getting political? No, they thought it was pretty funny. Okay, good. At least because somebody's it's in good-hearted nature. We're not saying boo this guy, boo that guy. We're just having a bit of fun. Yeah, you're just doing a silly voice. We're just doing we're just doing a silly voice. Well, some guy just started hosting us, which is a horrible mistake because the stream is less than a minute away from ending. <laughs> what do you mean someone's hosting us? It's some it says one verb is now hosting you for his viewers, but it it doesn't matter because I'm about to sign off. Monkey's Bernie is secretly Yogi Bear. Hey, boo boo! I think that the uh, picking it basket should be free. <laughs> ah, jeez, Bernie! You shouldn't take that picking it basket. Did you ever actually watch Yogi Bear, or is this just something that we all know? Because I've never watched I, the show. I think we've seen enough clips of it to get the hang of it. Yeah, and there was that no one live action movie, movie what ten years ago? Yeah, I think it was nine years ago, twenty ten. <laughs> Oof. Was that an animated atrocity, Mr. Enter? <laughs> There's got to be a Nostalgia Critic episode about it. I have there to is. imagine. There is. There is. <laughs> of course there fucking is. I have seen uh, Heglin. I have seen Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. It's a very good show. Birdman. <laughs> All right. Do you have any, uh, uh, instead of final thoughts for the interview, final thoughts for the stream before we say goodbye? Uh, I like doing streams. Yeah, if you ever too. want me on again, that'd be quite fun. Your audience is funny, understanding. They would never do anything mean-spirited to another creator at all. <laughs>
Yeah, we don't have to do an interview next time. We could just dick around or watch videos or something. That'd be fun. I have a lot of videos archived and saved. Well, not archived. I mean, like, in my bookmarks. If you want to watch them, have a good time, have a good laugh, and have a good general yeah. time. Speaking of watching videos, expect on this Twitch channel coming up soon, watching more short film entries to the contest. We might do that tonight. We might do some depression chamber. Maybe I'll post a poll on twitter.com slash Vincent Hates. God, don't forget to follow Daft Pina on Twitter for all the daftest updates to his pineapple skin. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Should we say goodbye? Uh, how, what's, what's a YouTuber goodbye? I'm trying to think of a YouTuber that has a known goodbye. Be you sure I mean? to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. But hey, that's a game. Wait, how's